Story number six takes us to the COP28 conference. This is the climate conference that's going on right now over in the UAE. The CEOs of Mediterranean Shipping, Maersk, CMA, CGM, Hophog Lloyd, all big container firms, and Millennius Wilhelmsen, which is a car carrier, call for an end date on fossil-only powered new builds. They are big players, these four companies. These are big shipping firms. And what we're talking about here is creating new ships with new power sources, getting away from diesel plants, diesel fuel is something new. Remember back in 2020, we went from high sulfur fuel to low sulfur fuel. Now we're, since 2023, we're measuring emissions, we're, we're creating these scorecards on vessels, but the plan is to, by 2050, to be at a 50% reduction in carbon emissions based on 2008 levels. But I think that's going to be ramped up, and you see that here with these men talking about it. The other stories here all deal with shipbuilding. Here, the Biden administration announces a $220 million grant to modernize ferry systems. Let me first say, that's terrible. $220 million to build ferries in the United States is a drop in the bucket. The Washington State Ferry System, which is the biggest ferry system in the United States, needs to build new ferries immediately. And the fact that we're just granting $220 million is criminal at this point. We need to be investing more in ship construction and, more importantly, in the replacement of older ferries that are absolutely crucial to the U.S. infrastructure. And we need to be spending this money on something better. The, the infrastructure bill is, is trillions of dollars, yet we're talking about spending $220 million in grants to modernize ferries. It is criminal on that. Meanwhile, HMM, which is the uh, one of the largest container lines, is matching C-SPAN in massive car carrier order for Hyundai Glovis Charter. So both C-SPAN, C-SPAN is, is a non-owner operator. They basically lease vessels out, but Hyundai Glovis is a ship operator. They run these big car carriers. And what we're seeing right now in the car carrier sector is shipbuilding like crazy. Crazy. They are building car carriers like you would not believe. This is a booming sector right now. I keep thinking the car carrier industry is going to die off because we're going to get the 3D printing of cars and modularity in cars. You're just going to move the parts instead of the assembled vehicles. But as long as it's cheaper to assemble a car somewhere else, they're going to move cars. And what we're seeing is more and more car carriers. And we've seen the risk associated with car carriers out there. Meanwhile, the world's first ammonia-fueled bulk carrier project moves forward. So we're seeing that ammonia that's being carried on those new Maersk tankers. Well, here's where you see it going because ammonia fuel is becoming the big fuel that a lot of shipping companies are going to adapt. And then next to ammonia, you have this story. And this is really the reason for story number six today was because this story hit the, hit the press and it definitely deserved to be out there. Plans for nuclear-powered 24,000 TEU container ship unveiled in China. So the China State Shipbuilding Corporation has unveiled plans for what could potentially become the world's largest nuclear-powered container ship. 24,000 TEUs using a fourth-generation molten salt reactor to generate electricity. Now, this does two things right here, and let's be clear about this. Number one, we are pushing for zero emissions. Nuclear is probably one of the best methods to create zero emissions. Uh, nuclear power plants basically produce a, a slug of radioactive waste, uh, which in the large scheme of things is a lot less than the amount of water and air pollution that comes out from other vessels. Uh, a 24,000 TEU ship is a monster of a ship. You're going to need a massive amount of power to move that. And I can't help but think that this is a test for a nuclear power plant that could go in Chinese warships in the future, particularly aircraft carriers. So I think they're using this as the test bed to determine whether or not they can actually put nuclear reactors into such a large vessel. Remember, we use two nuclear reactors in our aircraft carriers, and so this could be a good test for this. The molten salt reactor, this is a, a type of a small-scale modular nuclear reactor that uses a liquid mixture of salts as both the fuel and the coolant. 
The fuel, which is dissolved in the salt, allows for better control and efficiency in the nuclear reaction, and it provides improved safety and potential for higher fuel utilization. I, I am not a nuclear engineer, but the key thing here I know is that in water, that, that salt water in particularly, that you can use cooling and water for parts of this purpose. You're not dumping contaminated water in the ocean. That's not the way this system works. But this is a type of nuclear plant that's used. Now, the U.S. experimented with a different type of nuclear plant back in the 50s. Our second nuclear submarine, the Seawolf, was a sodium-based uh, nuclear reactor, which was found to be a problem because you can't turn it off because the sodium turns into a big slag. Well, nuclear-powered ships, I mean, commercial ships almost never turn their plants off. They're always running. So this has a potential here to be a game changer when it comes to use of vessels. What has held up the use of nuclear power in ships is a couple of things. Number one, the cost. Uh, the, the, it's a huge upfront cost. You have to train nuclear engineers. So, so the cost associated with both the building and the maintaining of the plan is, is, is very much upfront. Now you save money because you don't have to refuel it. So you get away from that fuel cost. The other issue is that a lot of countries don't allow nuclear powered ships into their country. However, China is the behemoth out there. They have a lot of leverage to go into places. So they may be able to extract that from other countries to be able to use their ships to come in. And again, I do think that this is an experiment for them to determine whether or not they can move a 24,000 TEU vessel. You're talking about 200,000 tons, uh, over 1,300 feet long, bigger than an, than an aircraft carrier to determine whether or not they can propul uh, to move a ship of that size with this method of propulsion.